Right, welcome back. Let's get into chapter eight. Any questions, chapter seven? Any questions? Okay. Chapter eight, work of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. Now, we looked at how the Holy Spirit works both even a little bit on the believer's life, but let's go a little more in detail and see the work of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. That is in each of our lives. Right? Is the Holy Spirit working in our lives? Yes. Okay. Now, at new birth, that means when we become believers. John chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. Let's read that. John 3, 1 through 8. Now there was a man of Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. He can a man be born? How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Right. So now Nicodemus is a teacher of the law. He comes to Jesus and he asks this wonderful question. How can one person be born again? Jesus is saying you have to be born again. How can you be born again? And Jesus replies so beautifully. He says, unless you are born of the water and the spirit. Now, it's very important to understand these two points, right? Water and spirit. Now, in the natural, when a baby is being born, the water breaks. And then it's a sign that the baby is going to be born anytime, any moment, right? Now, this could also signify the word of God has been referred to as the water. The water, the living water that refreshes us. Right? And so it could also signify spiritual rebirth, spiritual birth, water, and then of the spirit. The regeneration of the spirit. Now, somebody came and asked me during the break, you know, what, what is this? How, what is... 2 Corinthians 5.17, it is this, the regeneration of the spirit. Now, think of this. We have a body, we have a soul, and a spirit. The spirit and the soul are interchangeable. And the spirit and soul reside in a body. Yes? So this, who we really are is not our face. That is only to get into the airport. But otherwise, who we really are is our spirit, our character, as a person who we are. That's our spirit. Now, the regeneration, regenerative work of the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit comes and he testifies to our spirit. Then 2 Corinthians 5.17 happens. Read 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, I feel like a shepherd uh, leading the sheep. Therefore, read. Good. Therefore, good. if anyone is in the Christ, he is a new creation. All things has passed away. Behold, all things has become new. Very good. Very good. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation it is not new person a new creation all things have passed away all things become new now do i get wings and start flying does a halo come over my head does jesus come and you know paint me with his blood 
does he come and say okay paul now you become a believer does he jesus is coming and saying that no but the moment we become believers we know it's the work of the holy spirit all of our old sinful nature galatians chapter 2 has been crucified on the cross and all things become new so that is the work of the holy spirit right that sin nature has changed now here's the problem as a person we have become new we, our face our looks we may be fat thin short tall doesn't matter that will remain the same your friends will see you hey how are you they're not going to say hey paul you look like the seraphims or the cherubim angel no no they'll say you look the same but there is something different about you the way you're speaking is different the way you're you know, the way you're you know uh, talking to us is different your character looks different something is different because as a person you have changed read romans chapter 12 and verse 2 now when we become believers what happens we become a new creation read romans 12 2. i blessed you therefore romans them, chapter 12 and verse 2 and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm. Do not be, so Paul is writing to the believers of the church in Rome. He's writing to believers. He's saying, don't be conformed to this world. That means whatever the world is doing, you don't be conformed to it. But you be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, when the Holy Spirit comes into us, it's the work of the Holy Spirit to change our lives. Now we become believer. This is old Paul sinful angry doing all kinds of sin here this is new paul who's become a believer now all of that i'm not interested in but my thinking is still the same right somebody gets angry i get angry also it's a person inside my spirit is different but my thinking is still the same so paul is writing and saying do not be conformed to this world you transform yourself you're already believers now you have to transform your thinking by renewing your mind. Go back to the word. Renew what, what God is telling you. Don't go back to what the enemy is telling you, but renew your mind. The mind will say, you know, the enemy will come and say, you know what, you, you become a believer. No, now you don't have any friends. Nobody likes you. Oh, nobody likes me. I don't have any friends. You start crying. Oh, my life is lonely. You know. My life is bitter. Nobody loves me because I'm a believer. No. Come on, you pick up God's word. You say, hey, enemy, devil, I know the Bible says that the Lord is always with us. The Bible says, I will give you a peace that passes all understanding. The Bible says that I will stay with you. I will be with you at all times. And the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I may be feeling lonely, but Jesus is with me. The Holy Spirit is with me. What am I doing? I'm renewing my mind. Now the enemy will come and say, Oh, you're a believer, one year over. Nothing is go happening good in your life. When you were an unbeliever, you had good job, good money. Now believer, no job, no money. What kind of believer are you? You go back to God's word. So I renew my mind. Now, renew my mind means don't renew and sit at home and watch TV. You have to do, you have to do something about it. So you go back and say, God, I know you have a plan for me, plan to prosper me, plan to give me a good hope, good future. So Lord, you open the door for me. I'm not going to listen to the lies of the enemy. I'm not going to listen to what people are going to say. I'm going to go back to your word. That is called renewing the mind. Now, if I don't have the regeneration, if 2 Corinthians 5.17 didn't happen, how will I be able to renew my mind? I won't be able to, right? So you see here that it's, it's twofold. Born of the spirit, right? Born of the water is the natural birth, born of the spirit, uh, uh, talking about through the word of God. 
and the work of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of sonship has been sent into our hearts. Galatians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Galatians 4, 6 and 7. And because you are son, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a self, but a son, and if a son, then an higher of God through Christ. Yeah, look at that. So powerful this is. Because you are sons, that means because you have believed in Jesus. What does he, what does he do? What does God do? God sent his, the spirit of his son into our hearts. That is the Holy Spirit who calls out Abba Father. So that you are no longer slaves, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you an heir. What a powerful verse. Look at this. Since you have believed. See, Jesus is not saying you believe in me. No. He's saying you believe in me. Then he's following it up with something. Saying, I will send the Holy Spirit. He will come into you. He will stay with you and he will testify, right? And through that spirit, you can cry out, Abba, Father. And this morning when I woke up, I couldn't pray. So whenever I can't pray, I say, Holy Spirit, very tired, feeling sleepy. I'm feeling weak. Help me to pray. Right? So then I start praying in tongues. Now, one of the things I do is, if I sit, I'll feel sleepy. If I find the you know, most comfortable place in my house, what will happen? So there's a spiritual aspect, there's a natural aspect. So what do I do? I get up and start walking about. The moment I start walking about, now in the natural, I'm doing some activity, but my spirit is praying. My spirit is crying out. To the Holy Spirit, to Father, to the Father. The Holy Spirit again is testifying and crying out to the Father. All I'm doing is praying in tongues. I may be sleepy, but I'm trying to do something. You know, so I'm trying to what I'm trying to bring out is there's a natural aspect in what. Now, if I've gone back and taken my pillow and lying down, okay, go, Holy Spirit, please pray on my behalf. What will happen? He'll put me to sleep. I, I have to do something about it. I have to renew my, okay, am I sleepy? Yes. Am I tired? Very tired. How many hours of sleep? Four hours. Can I sleep now? Yes. But I need to renew my mind. What do I say? No. Holy Spirit, you pray on my behalf. I'm not able to pray. I'm tired. And then half an hour after the praying, you gain strength. Sleep is gone. Well, what happened? What happened? Only half an hour. Sleep is gone. Now all of a sudden you're able to pray and then you start praying. The Holy Spirit testifies and gives you and I the strength to do what you want us to do. That calls us uh, his sons and daughters. Two, sorry, three. The Holy Spirit gives us the assurance of our salvation. What is the assurance that you will go to heaven today? Thankfully, Nothing will happen to us. Hopefully nothing will happen to us. But what is the assurance that you and I as believers will go to heaven? Tell me. What is the assurance? Faith. Okay, very good. What else? Okay, okay. Some of you are scared. There's a believer. Right? There's a believer, he's riding the bike, something happens, he meets with an accident, he passes away. What is the assurance that he's going to heaven? Belief in Christ, okay. What else? The Holy Spirit who is the deposit of our inheritance. Very good. That's what I wanted. The Holy Spirit who is the deposit of our inheritance. That's the word I was looking for. Of what we're going to inherit in heaven. I'm not talking about inheritance here. When the person passes away, he cannot take anything with him. 
but he has an inheritance in heaven. Now think of this. You've got a believer who is, you know, one hour in the Lord. You've got another believer who is 30 years in the Lord. They both are driving, right? Something happens, they meet with an accident, both of them pass away. Now, what is the assurance both of them have gone? One is 30 years in the Lord, there's assurance. 30 years he's praying, singing songs, you know, praying in tongues, doing everything, reading Bible. 30 years he's doing. Yeah, this guy, one hour, he hasn't even opened the Bible. Before I gave him the Bible, I met with an accident. What is the assurance that he's in heaven? Is there any assurance? Is there an assurance? Yes. Because that moment, he's just one hour, he knows about Jesus. The moment he said, yes, I accept Jesus as my personal savior. And I know that my sins are washed away. And I know that I, now I'm a child of God. That is the assurance. Again, as I said, rewards are different. 30 years, one hour. But both will be in heaven. Both are called sons. Both will have an inheritance. Both will have a mansion in heaven. Both can go to Jesus and sit and talk to Jesus and do. Both will be in the presence of God. To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. You understand what, what, what I'm coming at? Right? He's an assurance. Nobody can take that assurance away. The devil will try to do it, but he cannot. If you and I as believers stand firm, the enemy cannot take out that assurance from you. He can bring all kinds of trials and tribulations and difficulties in life. That's okay. But he cannot take out the assurance that you and I have. He cannot break that. He'll try to break it. He'll try to take us away from what the scripture says. But if we really believe it, if we have that assurance, nothing can break us. That is why when a person dies, what do we say? He's gone? Where's he gone? He's gone home. He's gone back home to be with the Lord. He's not running around here. His spirits are not running around here. To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. He's gone back home. And a person dies, you don't call him by name. What do they say? Where is the body? Yes or no? Do you use the name? It's not valid anymore. Right? It's where's the body? When is the body coming? The viewing of the body will be at this time. The body will be put into this place. What happened to the person? What happened to his name? It's not valid anymore. Why? Because now he's a son of God. He's a child of God. He's there in heaven. That's the difference. That's an assurance nobody can take away from us. Okay. The life, in everyday life, the work of the Holy Spirit. We, he seals us by the Spirit. 2 Corinthians 1.22 2 Corinthians 1.22 Read. Who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a gratitude. Deposit. As a guarantee, is it? So my the version I have here says Set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing to what has come. That's so powerful. Two words, sealed and deposit. Now look at it naturally. If, a, if, I, if, you know, if each one of us, we, we finish our course, imagine I write your name in one paper and I say, these are your marks you have passed and give it to you. Will you accept it? What will you say? You say, sir, three years I was here. You're giving me in one ruled paper with my marks. So that's that's your marks. But the moment I get a seal and I stamp it with a Bible call it seal and a signature is made, what happens? There's value in that. Right? The paper quality may be the best paper quality in the world. And if there's no seal, there's no use. It's just a paper. The moment there's a seal, it's a document. It's proof. 
imagine this imagine a person has done uh, a course medical course right five years course and then after he finished five years but final exam he decided not to write right he didn't write the final exam now he's going into the hospital and saying he's applying for doctor's position the doctor says okay how many years you did your mbbs yeah five years what were your show me your marks card only four years marks card is there where is your fifth year no 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 i learned everything in four years fifth year i didn't feel like going to college so i didn't write my final year but first four years everything i have learned right this last final year give me a few months i will learn it and then when i come to work i will apply it in my you know i will i will use whatever i learned as a doctor will he give the job this is a four years course no value the value is you finish five years you got to pass you got to get the seal the stamp from the university from the organization and then when they see okay now he's a doctor just because you wear a white coat and one stethoscope around you doesn't mean we are a doctor we can look like one nowadays we have many of those but here the holy spirit seals us the moment we become believers it's like the holy spirit puts a seal on us it's a seal it's a mark paul emmanuel believer of jesus seal so wherever you go you have the seal you can be in uh, india you can be in north america you can be in inside underwater above the water wherever you are seal is there you don't go permanent seal now look at the next one the seal is for what for a guarantee to come so just because i've done my mbbs and i've got the guarantee the certificate i know that i can start applying for doctors positions if i've done my engineering and i go to the hospital and say i want to become doctor by mistake i took engineering what will happen they'll either beat you up or they'll send you away one of those two right now you done your doctor's course you get a guarantee that in the future you will become a doctor yes or no right the holy spirit is a guarantee he's he he has deposited <laughs> The Holy Spirit has deposited it in us. It's a guarantee. Right? It is something that nobody can take away. Everyone with me? Right? So what is there to laugh in that? It's a baby crying. What's so funny? <laughs> Strange. Okay. Holiness and sanctification. Right? Crucifying the flesh. Now. The flesh. What is the flesh? Worldly desires. desires. Okay. Now all of you are fasting and praying Friday. What is the flesh asking for? Ah. And food and rest. That's what the flesh is asking for. For me also, right now, I feel like eating and going and sleeping. Flesh will ask for hundred things, or sometimes I feel I should go sit in the beach alone. This will get a nice sunset. Flesh will ask for hundreds of things, but the Bible says we, as believers, are to crucify the flesh. Now this comes like a challenge. I thought you become believer, just you know, do everything good, then go to heaven, and Jesus would say, "Well done, faithful servant." Yeah, that's a good story. But they are called for other things. Crucify the flesh. Let's take maybe one verse. Uh, okay, there are chapters here. Romans 6, 6, 7, and 8. Again, yeah, talks about as believers what we must do. Uh, we have to crucify the flesh. We must live in holiness, be dead to sin because we are alive in Christ. Now, look at this. Think of it this way. An alcoholic. What does it mean to be dead in sin, right? An alcoholic. All his life he has been drinking. Now he dies. They put him into the casket. Then 
you can bring the most expensive liquor bottles ever sold and you put it all around his coffin say hey get up and drink your favorite you want to drink all your life no drink will he get up will he get up to drink why is dead it those liquor bottles have no value for him because he's dead if he's alive he has it has a lot of value but he's dead so no matter what you put there it has no value to him the same way we are alive in christ and dead to sin so when the enemy comes to bring temptations against us we are dead to sin think of it this way we are dead to sin we have to crucify the flesh devil will say you know you do this or say this to think oh, no i'm dead to sin i should not even think about it lord help me to overcome that's why the holy spirit comes in we tap into his strength his power his ability to enable us to overcome temptations right so we are called to crucify the flesh um, remember when i say crucify the flesh doesn't mean you don't enjoy your life right as believers we must enjoy see i many of them ask me right what you don't sleep you, you always do is i enjoy my life i go with my family to vacations i go to places i travel i love driving i go for long drives very long drives i love driving i can just keep driving not on these roads good roads highways just keep driving so from bangalore to oh, i've done bangalore to rajasthan i've done bangalore mumbai i've done bangalore nasik i'm not talking about here bangalore to mysore 100 kilometers no no we done thousands of kilometers driving and i love to drive all i need is music and food i can drive give me a good car but i i drive i drive a car i've gone and i keep going so it's not like i don't enjoy life i enjoy life but there are seasons to it i see the bible college is going on i'm not going to take a break now november bible college december starts next thing you see i'll be somewhere i don't know where i'll be somewhere but with the family i would have gone somewhere mostly we go we go to the mountains quiet places away from the city we drive up all the way i enjoy it. many things that i do right so i'm not saying don't enjoy enjoy your life but learn how to say no at times we must develop that ability you get what i'm saying right eat well don't don't say oh today uh, nothing you know i don't want to eat i don't feel i have to crucify the flesh no eat well there'll come a time you have to fast 21 days that time you fast otherwise eat well enjoy the food that is there right don't don't feel oh i have to crucify the flesh so no biryani no you eat there'll come a time when you have to crucify the flesh you get what i'm saying right enjoy what god has given you christian life is not a boring life we can make it boring see when i go home the whole evening i don't i play with my kids and we have a good time first we play football then we take a break for some time then we my son goes on the drums i play the guitar we play a couple of songs we have a good time we enjoy us then we play carrom board play a lot of games I put them to sleep then i start take out my bible read research whatever take out my laptop work right so crucifying the flesh doesn't mean don't enjoy life crucifying the flesh means crucifying things that can take us away from god right okay perfecting holiness thirdly sanctifying work of the holy spirit what is the word sanctify means the word sanctify means to be set apart right that's holiness that's right made holy and set apart we set apart so the holy spirit sets us apart from others hey why are you so different why are you going every sunday to church because i'm sanctified i'm set apart for god 
But why don't you come play football with us? I'll come on any other day except Sunday morning. Why? Because I'm set apart. This is what, what I am. This is who I am. This is what I will be. That doesn't change. Whether I'm inside the church, whether I'm outside the church, whether I'm on holiday, whatever it is, sanctified. And even on holiday, automatically, I open my eyes, it's early morning. What to do? Pray. Also not like, oh, holiday, no need prayer. No. It's, it's set apart, it's sanctified, it's kept aside. You do it, no matter what. right? And the Holy Spirit does the sanctifying work. He, he speaks into us and says, hey, I've set you apart, sanctified you. So whatever you do, remember that you are a child of God. Right? So you have to stay holy. I will help you to stay holy. I will, I will correct you. I'll bring conviction. But there's a work that you have to do. Then we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Let's read that. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. This is very, very important. What are we? Say that together. Temple of the? Say the whole thing. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That means the Holy Spirit resides in us. As a temple, there's a way that we must keep our body. Right? Let's read that. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Do you not know that you are the temple of God, that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defies the temple of God, you will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Hmm. Do you not know that you yourselves are God's temple and God's spirit lives inside you? Now, this is so powerful. Imagine the same glory, the same presence that was there in the Ark of the Covenant, the Old Testament, where the high priest will go and, you know, you will think, you know, if you have sinned, you will die there. But here, the Holy Spirit, you and I are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, we, will we keep the temple dirty? No. We'll keep it clean. Cleanse it. Right? If there are places where it's dirty, we have to cleanse it. But we are the temple. The Holy Spirit stays in us, residing in us, always. Right? What does it say there? Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is sacred and you are that temple. What a powerful verse this is. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit who is God. God is deciding to send his spirit to rest in us. And sometimes what we do, we chase him away. We grieve him. We say, no, Lord, I'm the temple of your Holy Spirit. There are things in my life that I have to change. If there are things that I have to turn from, Lord, you teach me. Help me. Right? And this is the beautiful thing. As he is residing in us, we can always talk to him. You know, Christianity doesn't become boring. Christianity or living a Christian life doesn't become tiresome. Because physically we do get tired, work and doing ministry. It's tiring. But we always have the Holy Spirit in us. Let me tell you the story. I, but I just want to tell you this quick story. For well, this wonderful man in church history, his name is Henry Martin, born in the early 1800s. Henry Martin was a man who had warts on his hand, on his face, you know, warts. But he was a genius. He was a Cambridge scholar. Everyone would be playing on the cricket field, but he would be somewhere sitting alone because of his appearance. Henry Martin fell in love with a young girl because, of, because he had a brilliant mind. And one day, Henry Martin was sitting in a chapel and the preacher was preaching about the need of the gospel in India. And his heart began to throb. He said, oh, I want to go to India. 
and do missionary work there. So he goes to his, uh, you know, to her, his girlfriend's house who he wanted to marry and say, let's get married. Let's go to India and serve the Lord together. That girl said, out of all the places, India is one place I will never step into. And Henry Martin said, God, how can you say that? Uh, I, I, let's go. We'll serve God together. She said, no. But this man came alone all the way to India, to Kolkata, began to do ministry. After some time, he was chased out of India. He was dragged by chains and into Persia. He went into Persia. He was put into prison. He was killed, martyred at the age of 31 years old. Killed for the sake of Jesus. Do you know what he gave to the world before he left? Translation of the New Testament in Hindustani, in Persian and Arabic. Three translations of the entire New Testament by one man who died before the age of 30, at the age of 31. When you and I sanctify ourselves to God, He can do great things in us. He's just looking for people. Three translations, Hindustani, Persian, and Arabic. At the age of 31, he died. He came to India. He came to our nation. And God sanctifies us, sets us apart. There is a reason for it. He wants to do something in us right and he changes us into christ likeness we become like jesus we become like him the more we uh the more we our walk our talk everything becomes like jesus that's what we are pursuing right to be more like jesus and then we we begin to walk in the spirit walking filled in the spirit let's read romans 5 5 Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts. When the love of God is poured out into our hearts, we begin to walk in love. We walk in the Spirit, being filled with the Spirit. How do I fill myself with the Spirit? Think of it this way. There's a big tank. Right? A reservoir, big, huge. And this, and water keeps spilling in from the river. This tank is a thousand liter or a, or not a thousand, maybe a, a hundred thousand liter tank. Right? So I go and I fill myself some water. And then I get empty again. So then I go back, I fill some more. I go. So whenever I need, I go back and fill water for myself. That reservoir keeps filling up. That tank will not empty. It'll keep filling up. So the same way, the Holy Spirit is like this big reservoir. He's got so much to tell us. And we have to go to Him. You get what I'm saying? We will feel dry at times. How many of us have felt dry in our Christian life at times? Many, many times, many times, you feel a dryness. You feel, God, what is happening? Nothing. But you go back to that reservoir. Say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me with that refreshing water that this dryness will be removed. And then he fills us. He anoints us with his Holy Spirit. Then we walk in the Spirit. We walk in the fruit of the Spirit. Anyone know what the fruit of the Spirit is? Anyone who knows it, who knows all of them? Put your hand up. You know, give him the mic. How many, okay, how, how many virtues are there? Nine, okay. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Very good. Now you... This is something all of us should know. What is homework? What is homework? 
learn the two things learn the nine gifts and the fruit some of you are like oh homework who oh, wants homework is it is homework good if it's not good also we have no choice that's your homework <laughs> okay so nine gifts of the holy spirit and the fruit now here's what's interesting it's nine gifts of the holy spirit but it is the fruit of the holy spirit it's not fruits it's fruit it's one fruit it's one apple or one orange so if you have one apple you either have all the fruit or you don't have it so when the holy spirit comes he comes with the fruit of the holy spirit love joy peace patience kindness he comes with all of those attributes and he loves and we when we tap into the holy spirit we can ask him god i hate this person but lord fruit of the spirit is saying love so i have to walk in that fruit so how do i love this person he has done so much of harm to me i don't even want to see his face but the holy spirit says love him i can't do it on my own i know you can't do it on your own you tap into the holy spirit he's there in you ask him to give you the fruit you see what's happening now i'm not depending on myself i'm depending on the holy spirit patience very difficult no to wait waiting is very difficult but he gives us patience lord i'm not able to lord now right now i want the pulpit and the mic right now god will say wait i can't wait and you ask the holy spirit he'll help you to wait see what's happening he gives us the patience so you and i are to tap into these the the gifts and the fruit of the holy spirit we must do it we must ask it won't come automatically we must ask for it right and then it gives us liberty second corinthians 3:17 Go ahead, read Second Corinthians three seventeen. Who has the mic? Second Corinthians three seventeen. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Mm. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom, right? So when we walk in the spirit, when we tap into the works of the Holy Spirit, there is freedom. So there is no bondage, there is no pressure. You know, you have to perform this way. No, the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom. He releases us from the things of the flesh, and we can walk in the Holy Spirit, right? So we'll stop here. And we'll get into the somebody make a mark there, and we we'll get into revelatory work of the Holy Spirit next class, and uh, and then very importantly we we'll look at uh, the hearing from the Holy Spirit. That's very important, so we can pick up that from next class, right? Any questions? Any thoughts? Those online. All right. So let's close. Uh, let's just quickly pray and close. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for speaking and ministering to us, Lord. We pray, Holy Spirit, even as we have learned that you are the God who loves us. And I pray, Lord, that you will teach us, continue to speak in and through us, God. Thank you that you will never leave us, you will never forsake us. And we commit each one of us into your hands, Lord. Help us to walk this life in the right way, just the way that you have ordained for us, O God. We commit ourselves into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all. See you next week.